morning guys sal with SP. uh today we're going to wire up this uh 24 valve in our mark one um i'm going to kind of cover what your harness is going to look like when it comes back from us what um what things you might need to do how i kind of like to route it um this this application will be a semi tucked or at least a hidden harness as as best we can but it's all stock length uh, we haven't lengthened this harness it's just the way you would have pulled it from the 24 valve send it to us uh, we will have it fused relayed labeled and sent back to you so this is um, this isn't, isn't a special length harness or anything like that you can do this with any harness we send you um, so let's uh, let's start with the <clears throat> This part of the harness, this is going to be the large connector off your ECU. Um, this is the one that has the most things for you to do. Um, we've got some battery leads. These need to go directly to uh, your positive battery power or a distribution block if you have one. Um, they are fused. They include fuses in them. Um, we have two relays, one for our fuel pump system, <coughs> one for our ECU. Uh, the one from the fuel pump has a lead that says fuel pump positive. You're going to power your fuel pump from this wire. Um, I'll show you how I connect them inside the car, but one way or another, this, this must power your fuel pump. Um, that way your ECU is controlling it. Um, everything will work like, like it is designed and came from the Mark IV setup. Uh, this is the, the wire that, that gets the most confused. It's labeled trigger. This turns on our relays. So this wire must have power in both the key on and the start cycle. So um, on a gasoline car, the most common place to find that would be your coil power wire. Um, most of the time in a Mark I, they were black. Uh, if you had a diesel car, like this one is, um, the fuel solenoid switch on the injection pump also has the same style power. I'll also show you how to test that with a multimeter. Um, you can do it with a test light, but uh, we'll cover that. But that is, that is the number one trip up. Um, what will happen is you'll, be, you'll turn the key on to run and you, you found switched power. And your ECU will, will wake up, throttle body will hum, fuel pump will prime. All the things will happen except for when you go to crank it, absolutely nothing will happen. It'll just sit there and crank and, and nothing will ever start. And uh, what's happened is you found power that gets dropped under the cranking circuit um, to save power and, and um, allow the, the car to start. But there is a limited uh, source of start run power and that's that's labeled circuit 15 in your Bentley manuals um, or any any Volkswagen wiring diagram setup so um, let's put this in the car and uh, we'll get well, I'll show you what I've done with the other side of the harness already all right so here we have the other side of your ECU connection on this 24 valve now this harness <coughs> is a 2.8 uh, 24 valve harness so it is set up for a single o2 sensor and we have put a mark 5 uh, intake manifold on it so we are going to have to turn these connectors around because uh, originally this this section of your coil harness on a mark 4 went up here and laid across the top and then turned back this way but these coils will only go in these intake manifolds a certain direction and this coil is backward so um, we're going to end up taking this upper connector off and turning it around so it faces the other way and then we'll be able to plug in our harness like this in the direction it needs to go um, if you have a standard 24 valve or you're running a, a 2.8 intake manifold none of that's going to be an issue for you uh, everything plugs in like normal um, I have split this harness apart and I've taken off all the corrugation uh, we usually don't take off the corrugation unless we have a problem in the harness itself 
when we're when we're testing it. So I'm going to run this thing actually through the heater core hole because we are deleting the heater core system and I'll reuse the grommet um, for our, our wiring protection in there. This is going to give us plenty of length and it's actually going to lay underneath and by the time I get all of this loomed and tucked in it's just going to look like a shift cable. All right, so <clears throat> it looks like we've just made more of a mess than there was. But what I'm trying to do is get some of this old loom <clears throat> off of this wiring. And <clears throat> if you were, you know, keeping your heater core in this this space that we are using <clears throat> right now wasn't available to you. What I've used before is um, this. You can use this drain space here. I'll show it to you on another car. I actually have one in here uh, with the ECU sitting in this space, but I'll I'll post a still of that here in a second. Um, but another thing that I do is some of this wiring here is uh, like your coolant temp sensor oil pressure you have a starter wire here um, in some of your other cars you might have um, your coil wire coming out of there uh, this big heavy wire <coughs> this big heavy wire here is glow plug so it's going to go away but what i've done in the past is actually take pretty much everything out of this loom except for the wiper section um, and move it, you know, pull it back inside the car and then pull it out through this headlight harness here, um, which leaves me a full grommet open. And if you're real careful, you can actually take a sharp pair of scissors and you can cut this right through here and put it around your harness, um, whatever you want to pass back through there, be that the ECU harness itself, um, you'll have to you have to be pretty limited with the wiring you put in there for that size grommet but um, anyway you can cut that apart and glue it back together with either super glue or uh, I like to use the black weather stripping adhesive uh, it works real well um, I'll also have some grommets to replace these uh, soon I don't I don't know if it'll be uh, definitely won't be this month but it'll probably be probably midsummer um, I should have replacement grommets for this stuff for your Mark 1's. Um, anyway, so we're stripping this harness down and going to just remove, <coughs> this was an AC car, um, so I've pulled some of our AC wiring out. I've got one section left in the car plus my glow plug piece to come out and uh, this is the your auxiliary AC stuff uh, it was a separate harness in these early cars so once we get once I get that far I'll probably take you inside the car and show you um, our harness connections and kind of how how uh, I lay those out inside um, but yeah, then we'll come back out here once we have uh, all of our, <clears throat> I'm sure we have all of our wiring pulled through. I will add um, a couple things for the inside of the car. Oh, this had a, uh, this had brake switches on the master cylinder. And I didn't put a T in. Um, I've put a T in and used a pressure switch before, but... Uh, what I'm actually going to do is pull this back inside the car and I'll put a brake switch on the pedal itself. So that'll that'll pull those wires back inside. So here we are 
just still prepping the chassis harness. We're removing pieces that we don't need, getting the loom out of there, um, laying the harness the way we'd like it to go, uh, lengthening or shortening any wiring that, that needs to be adjusted, but this is all still just chassis wiring work. Okay, so this is kind of what we've cut out. Um, some of this wiring you would not need to cut out if you were keeping AC or if your car is staying a, a diesel, you know, if you're doing a TDI swap. Um, some of this could stay, but we've removed a, a bit of wiring and what we're actually going to do is repurpose a little bit of wiring that's in here um, and then we're going to kind of redirect the way it went to hide it without necessarily doing a you know a shaved bay install or trying to hide it in the fender or anything like that we're just going to kind of reroute it so everything's a little neater and cleaner for us um, so uh, this car's got a little front fog light on it um, I'm going to grab one of these AC wires that I know goes inside and is easy to identify. That's going to be my trigger wire for that little fog light. Um, but we pulled inside our gauge wires, so our coolant temp, oil pressure. Um, We've also pulled inside our reverse lights and our brake switch lights, and I have all of those pulled and set aside separate. Um, we're also going to take this starter wire, and I'm going to run it back through actually with my engine wiring so that I don't have a, a single wire just uh, running for my starter. Uh, it'll just kind of, <clears throat> you know, kind of keep it a little cleaner compared to where we're taking our... Um, headlight wiring and stuff like that. Um, this is a pretty common junction I find in these uh, early cars for the starter. Um, and what we'll actually do is remove all of this so that it's one piece and we're not trying to power the starter through a uh, 10 junction in here. So uh, we'll cut that out and make a, a solid splice there. All right, so this is a gasoline car, um, and I'm going to show you where <coughs> your fuel pump harness is going to come from, so you can connect that to our pump wire on our ECU uh, management harness that we send you. So you can see I brought some of this wiring actually through the bulkhead on this Scirocco. Uh, this is the one where I have the ECU out in the rain tray, and our pump harn our pump wire. From our bundle of uh, harness that we send you is right here and <clears throat> this loom that runs along the driver's side frame rail goes all the way back to the back of the car right behind the driver's seat it breaks <clears throat> and then that goes in and through the bulkhead in the floor pan out to your fuel sender and then there's two wires that drop down to the fuel pump on the passenger side of the car right underneath uh, kind of where that low spot is in the floor. So we come back up here to this loom and there is a red and yellow wire coming out of it right in here that used to go to your fuel pump relay. Um, you want to remove that from the fuel pump relay and remove the fuel pump relay itself and then connect our uh, wire to that one um, and you can do an ohm test on that and make sure that you got the right one but again a Bentley manual is a great thing for you to have especially for the chassis that you're working on okay so on this diesel car I had to add a basically add a fuel pump system so I, I put in a lift pump uh, that feeds this can that houses uh, a Bosch 044 pump and then I had to make a harness uh, go through the floor pan right where the fuel sending unit went and I ran that wire all the way up to the um, ECU there and I'll show you that connection here in just a second.
Okay, we're under the dash of the diesel car, and I've got my relays positioned over here. Um, this will get loomed and tucked up a little later, but this is the fuel pump power wire that I pulled um, from the back of the car since this car did not have a fuel pump in the back. Uh, you'll notice I didn't pull a ground wire. I grounded it to the same point um, on the chassis that the fuel sending unit is grounded. I did not use the fuel pump or the fuel sending unit ground, but just use the same grounding point. It does, your fuel pumps will need their own ground. So here you're going to see me starting to loom the actual engine and chassis harness. Um, this is a loom that we carry in the shop. It is fantastic stuff. Uh, quick tip, use uh, the small stuff first and run it back to your large harness and cover the large harness last. Um, that will help you make it a little neater and cleaner. And then use our cloth tape to wrap any of your joints. So here's where I'm remaking those coil pack harnesses to fit that uh, 3.2 intake manifold from the Mark V. Um, it's a lot of little tiny pieces of loom and lots of tape, um, lots of little junctions, and then finally getting the coil pack covers, which actually use 3.6 coil pack covers on this because they, they actually sit flat uh, if you look across them. So I like that a little better than the up and down of the 24 valve stuff. Here's the brake switch that we put in. Um, like I said, it's just it's just going to go off of the pedal. Um, that's that's the way they converted, you know, into the North American cars. They went away from the pressure switch, so.